purpose of this reunion this weekend was to celebrate the life of the school since it started because in a couple of weeks time it's going to close forever and we thought we should celebrate it rather than think of doom and gloom stories about how bad it is we're celebrating what we've had. Hello I'm Wendy Spry and I've worked at the school for the last 21 years. My name's Jess Sewell, um, went to school here I think I started in 88, <laughs> a while ago. Um, I'm probably one of the younger ones, actually, out of those that are here today. Hi, my name is Deanne and I taught here in 2005 and uh, it's a wonderful experience getting to know the community. You know, you can see the sense of community that everyone still has this belonging to a... Um, to a place. To a place, Spirit yeah. of the place. It's where you came up. It's the things you yeah. identify yep. with when you're um, growing up, isn't it? There's a really great spirit in the town and... Uh, uh, I know when you drive through it you tend to miss, I miss a lot, but uh, when you stop and, uh, and uh, sort of smell the flowers as the saying goes, uh, there's, there's a lot to, to offer. Yeah. Thirty-four have come to Calgo. Very good, the, uh, the school then. We used to, uh, the teachers used to bring us out under the pepper trees and read stories to us, and we used to ride the pony and then the, the bike. And uh, I rode the bike everywhere for a long while. Rode the Saturday night dances up to Berry Willie, rode into footy, and kept riding the bike about. And, uh, the whole turn, I'm going to finish up on the bike for those things are going. Okay, well, I think we're ready to move on with the, the next group now. Which is a... I'm Max Spry. I came to Colgold School uh, in 1931, I believe I was enrolled, and left at the end of 1940. Um, I was one of five. Our family travelled in by gig. We were five miles out of town. Well, that's eight kilometres, I think, there. The, the 30s, yeah. look, as kids we didn't bother that much. We played our games, we engaged in sport, we went to different, well, it was like a, a journey in another, to another country going to a place like uh, Ultima or Albert, and we had to go over there for a football match on one occasion. It was like going into another territory. Kim George, Laurie Heinrich, Sue Holmes, Peter Innes, my name's Peter Innes, I was the head teacher here from 1976 to 1979 inclusive and I've got a lot of fond memories of the Kalgawa school. I took the kids away on, on trips, uh, we went, went to Melbourne and uh, some, of the, some of the kids had been to Melbourne and I was trying to tell them at all the hills, they had, the cows had two short legs so they wouldn't fall off the hills, which they thought was a fairly good logic. Uh, we went down the bus, all the boys were amazed that um, how small the backyards were. You know, where can you play cricket and where can you play footy? We're going to go fishing because, because you couldn't. And I think every student who went down got headaches because of the, of the pollution in the air. This is back in, back in the 70s. Marilyn Harrington, Paul McNamara. Well, I'm Paul McNamara. I was a student here from uh, 1955 to probably 61. And uh, it was the biggest school then. There was probably uh, 52 to 55 students here. And... Uh, we had, uh, we had great sporting or athletic things. That was our biggest uh, fund we had here, was the school sports, which we used to win quite regularly. I played um, football here and then I was a professional runner after that. Took me to uh, Stall, to the Stall Gift, where I ran third, and uh, to uh, Bendigo Thousands, where I um, was placed second twice, 73, 75. Couldn't quite get there. And won the Borough Mine Gift at Yarrawonga and uh, ran until I broke my leg in the car accident and that was it, it's all over. But that all stemmed from here, from, uh, from having teachers that were interested in you, to uh, pick out any ability that you may have had and uh, they nurtured it and, and got you through. And uh, I appreciate them for that. I remember fondly the teachers I've worked with. Um, I've made some really good friends. And yes, I have. We've seen some teachers with some very innovative and progressive 
um, thinking and open to the world and wanting these children to have the very best. Sarah Blackmore, Rihanna Costello. I'm the third school generation to come through the school. My grandfather started here I think in the 30s. He attended primary school here and then all my, my dad and his brothers and sisters all came here as well and now there's been me and my three siblings have come through the primary school as well. So yeah, schools have been a fairly strong association to the school and my mum actually came here in the 80s and was a teacher here and that's how she met my dad. So <laughs> you can say the Colgar Primary School has been a fairly significant part of our family's lives. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we sort of started with, I went to school with Shane's brother Brett, who was six months older than me, and I think there's probably 18 months between you and Brett. No, no, no only um, 11. 11 months? Yeah, they breed quickly up here. They, they do breed quickly. <laughs> so and we, we used to go on the bus, do you remember we used to go on the bus yeah, with, with the O'Briens, and you get the long run or the short run, and you were sort of stuck in the middle, so you yeah. were sort of, it didn't really matter which way you went, but it did for us, we were stuck one way or the other, and then back in those days we used to have um, a couple of motorbikes, and we used to go... Yeah. Probably a little bit before we had licences, we used to drive around and yes. go bird nesting. Yes. And I used to help him, I used to be down the bottom of the tree. So I'm probably just a bit higher up there, you'll be right. Uh, we so did you did most of the action man work, I yeah. was just sort of the reconnaissance guy. Uh, I'm Laurie Heinrich, uh, I was head teacher at uh, the Colgar School from 1967 through to the end of 71. When I arrived I was supposed to look up the secretary of the school council which was uh, Bob Shirley. So I looked through the uh, phone book and I couldn't see any R Shirley or B Shirley. So I rang the exchange and the uh, chap there called Bunch Aldenhoven said, oh, you mean Henry Vincent? So that was fine. I got on to Bob Shirley. And uh, the neighbour next door was uh, Kevin Barry. He was known as George. So things like that went on for the whole uh, five years I was here. And needless to say, a lot of the children had uh, nicknames themselves. So, uh, and I added a few as well to, to the children. Hi, my name's Ryan Curry. I taught here a few years ago back in 06. Uh, this is my first job pretty much straight after uni. I uh, worked here, lived right right there across the road and it was, uh, it was a real eye opener. Like it, as, a, as a graduate you just learn how to teach but when, when you worked here you sort of realised how to run a school. Like you're doing a lot more things. If Ange wasn't there, the principal at the time, or it still is, you it's up to you and so you, you had to run the school and you learned a lot about that. Um, the family support was fantastic, like we only had eight kids but mainly it was brothers and sisters so you, you only had to deal with a certain number of parents. Um, it was just, I, I enjoyed it, like it was the, coming from a country, a country town of Swan Hill but coming out here was just fantastic, you got to like, know, know the locals, know the publican, know the footy club, it was just, I really enjoyed living here. So. My name's Kerry Mather and I came to Colgar in 1987 as a statewide relieving teacher and I taught here until the end of 1991. But I loved being here, it was really good, I loved the kids. The parents are pretty good too, but the kids are just fantastic. Not, they're just different to city kids. They're, they're just more down to earth and all that sort of stuff. And it's been a great, my children have gone to school here, my husband went to school here. Well, my three children have been to the primary school. Their father has been here and their grandfather attended school here. The Cole Girl community is my home, so that's special. And I'm a, I feel very valued in this community. Our children are all cared for and owned by that community and loved by that community. And I think that's special in this day and age where they know their place. The kids all have this place and that's Cole Girl. That's home. <laughs> My name's Max and I'm 12 years old and when I grow up I want to work as a vet. My name's Ella and I'm 10 years old and when I grow up I want to be a vet. My name's Mitchell and I'm 12 years old and I want to be a cricket star. My name's Tom and I'm 11 years old and I want to be an accountant. Hello, my name's Patrick Berry and I am 9 years old and when I grow up I want to be a zookeeper. 
Hi, my name is Shane, I'm 11 years old and I want to be an actor. We are the last kids of primary school. Well, the kids really interact as a family group. They um, are pretty close to each other. Of course, there are a couple of sets of brothers and sisters, but nevertheless, they all get along really well and all rely on each other. And because they haven't got to choose to go and be friends with someone else, they have to work at being friends with each other. Because we've got a small school, we can't like really play many games, but the ga games we can play are really good. The next school is going to be much bigger and you get more one-on-one -on -one with the teachers in schools like this. I am looking forward to go to my new school because I can see my new friends and um, yeah. probably the music lessons. Yeah, that they're great. Brodie Glenn teaches us and um, I'll miss them. I like the school concerts and stuff and how everyone gets a good part in that and we all do a good job in that. Well, I'd have to agree that with Ella that the concerts are really a highlight and again because there's so few children they get to play a major part in, in, each, of the, in each of the productions and uh, it's a lot of work but it's always rewarding because the whole town, all the people in Colgoa, the old ladies get new dresses and it's a, you know, it's a grand thing at the Colgoa Hall, we all come for the, for the concert. Well the Considines uh, donate the ice cream to the Colgoa Primary School each year for their Christmas concert and Mary Considine started donating it in 1913. This year um, Lockie Considine will donate the ice cream and dish out the last of it uh, after all those years of three generations. Well we're doing our band the Wild Things, and I'm the singer, and Patrick plays the drums, and the rest, everyone else plays the guitar. Wild Thing. to the Cogar Primary School in the 80s. Um, when I was in grade six, there was nine in the whole class. Our school, sorry, I was the only one in my grade. Um, after that, travelled to Sea Lake High School for two years and then went away to Monterey College in Hamilton, which most of the kids in the district at that time did. Oh, well, I suppose you just grow up, you're just with your mates and the people are like even today, you know, what. 30, over 30 years later, we're still friends. 1960, yeah, I started at the primary school and went there all my life. I'm actually from here, born and bred here, and I ended up marrying a guy from here. <laughs> so now we went through the primary school, he was a couple of years ahead of me, and then our children have all gone through, so yeah, which has been good. I think, um, if I can sum it up, that uh, humble times back then, but very uh, rich memories, you know, which is evident of today. I was enrolled in uh, 1946, and my sister and two older brothers also went there, so did my mother and Peter's parents. Father, no, not your parents, your grandparents. Grandparents, yeah. Who were my mother's brothers and sisters, they all went there too. So there's a lot of connection with the Cecils at the State School, which is, goes back a long, long way. Martin was always late for school. I left at the right time, but I'd start to look for things. We'd come across the common, chasing the ants. And sometimes they'd have Always to send someone, someone back to get me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Charlie never smacked me or did anything. No. He'd say, yeah, well, you know, he's a school and now. He'd say, here comes Lightning Larry. <laughs> yeah, that was, my, that was my name, <laughs> Lightning Larry. That's right. <laughs> back in the 40s, every square mile had a house on it and a family and so you'd make an, in an income off that just with the one father doing one dad doing the work and then as they expanded they have two blocks and then three blocks and four blocks and I heard somebody say there's only really ten, fa ten families farming this cold, whole Colgo area where before there would have been hundreds. Yeah it's a bit sad but that's the way the 
country's going now, the little towns, all the big, all the farms are getting bigger. Neighbours are buying out each other, and the population is not in it. Just the way society is now. Um, don't know if it, we're going to stay. We've just bought a house. We're committed to staying in Kalgoa and raising our kid kids, hopefully, um, in a country town, in a farming town. But the concern is the fact that the school is closing and this is a part of the town is closing, closing down. I think um, it's a huge step backwards. Kids need and have an, an education in a primary school like Kalgoa was, and when I was first here was around the 65 students. Everybody knows everybody. It's a totally holistic education system. They can get out, they can do things, they can fall out of trees like they're supposed to be. It's a sad day because there's a lot of history here. And when you shift to school, the community suffers because you can't get your school back. Well, all the all the equipment, like this play equipment, will be will go with the children to the school down the road where they're going, the bigger school, and all the sports equipment and the books and the computers and everything really bar except the actual portable which will go to Sunshine or somewhere like that where they need more portables. So hopefully we'll be able to keep a lot of the things that we've worked towards providing. Oh, the primary school closing is disappointing I think to all the people who went here because uh, it, uh, it was a springboard to uh, a lot of successful people in academic wise and whatever and it's sad that the Mallee has got this way now that the uh, the towns have got that small that they just can't support and the people just aren't here anymore. You know, it goes like this, the population, but at the moment the, lo the dip's too low and we have to close. I feel sad that we've got so small but I can't turn the tide back, that's what's happened. So I think we'll all move forward. And we'll remember with pride what we've done here. It's amazing, you know, I've been past some of those, there was a Pine Plain school and it was from 19, something like 1915 to 1921. It's just down the road, yeah. near Sully's place yeah. down there. And I thought, it's been really amazing what that, the memories of that bit of land were, that, you know, the First World War and how tough things were. You know, so here's going to be another sign soon. It'll have, you know, Colgate Primary School, such and such till 2008. That'll be the end of another lot of memories. The township itself it was always a very friendly town. We never had very many arguments or no bad arguments. And uh, whether that was down because we had a policeman here and kept us in order or what it was, but uh, it was uh, noted as a friendly town. There seemed to be plenty to do. It was, we used to go to uh, ballroom dancing, we used to have what they called balls, uh, two or three times a week we'd be going up there. And uh, we had a few friends and there was Four couples here, it was uh, the Mudgers, the Mansbridges, and the uh, Mortisons and us. And uh, we go to the Cabaret Ball and we skite because we left 27 kids at home. Well, the world really can, uh, sort of was contained in Colgoa. Col uh, we, we couldn't travel far, we didn't have the money. Uh, we thought we were poor, but we didn't worry about it. We had ample to eat, well clothed, well cared for, loved, supportive. Our parents were wonderful to us. And there were great, there were a lot of big families here. And living at the hotel wasn't a big deal. Look, we had an extended family. There were five children. My father had, was away at the war in 1941 as well. And my mother was running the hotel with her parents. And we had grandparents who lived with us and a grand aunt. And, quite an extended family and the hotel was um, you know quite bustly and the town was bustly in those days you know it was and um, it was just a very happy experience. When the moon landing occurred um, uh, the whole 50, 50 odd kiddies uh, ended up in the lounge room of the old house over just over the road and uh, we crowded in there for all the day there was nobody here at the school I don't know who called or uh, anybody came in and ransacked the place. Uh, we were all over there for the whole day. That was a, uh, a real, real highlight. 
But one of my strongest memories was around the procession. Uh, when we were young girls, apart from doing your first communion as, as Catholics, um, was going in the procession in September when Father Pray Payne had organised a um, procession to pray for rain. And we um, used to dress up in all the, everyone who had come from the district um, to have a, a day, in, I think it was in September, and we used to wear our little white frocks and fill up baskets. Um, we'd all carry baskets, all the girls, and with petals and uh, spread them out. And yeah, had a, it was like a, um, a big church service to pray for rain. We came here in the 70s, and the 70s, you know, if you go back and look at the 70s, the 70s was like the wettest decade in 100 years. Mm. So we had it when the, the, the floods would come up right to the edge of the school. So there would be periods where you know, there would only be one tenth of the, the, the actual school grounds you could actually use. One of our jobs was to punch on a recess. We made these little boats to go down the flood because it flooded half the oval. And we used to make them out of cornflake packets and things like that. And we finally worked out that the milk cartons were the best because they were waterproof. We had um, a truck accident here and, and it was a, a truck had lost its load at the back of the school and it was a vegetable truck. And of course there were vegetables and cabbages and everything everywhere. And there was, in 1970, the, uh, the, the, it lives long in the memories of many Colgoa people when the, uh, a beer, cr a beer, beer truck, truck crashed, yeah. just uh, the week before Christmas. So, of course, all the, all, the, all the farmers with their utes, they all got in there with their utes and they were driving away from the scene with the utes all piled Pile up, up with, full, with, of beer. full of beer and all yeah. long necks in those days. Yeah. Um, when my twins were born, there was a mouse plague. So we had to put the, the cots in buckets of water uh, because the mice would... Otherwise, they'd climb into the cots and, and chew the baby's hair. So in the mornings, I had to come over and empty out the traps that I'd set the night before, and bang all the desks to get the mice out of the uh, out of the out of the desks and out of, out of the room, and uh, also to check the water levels in the uh, in the buckets where the table leg stood in, so that the kids could put their lunch boxes on to stop the mice getting into them. Nothing better than killing mice. Yeah. Really Go out mousing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There is a time for birth and death, planting and reaping, for killing and healing, destroying and building. Jack's enrolment is number 230. He is the oldest pupil of the school still living in the district. You have gathered here over the past two days to remember your time and perhaps the time of your children and grandchildren spent here at Colgoa Primary School. Four, three, two, one, go! The still strong. Mm. It's only it's it's just a matter of attitude. It's as strong as the people in the community. Mm. And if this weekend's anything to go by. Yeah, I think this will strengthen a lot of people's Attitude. attitude towards mm. what our community can do because we have pulled off a really good show. <laughs> we think. <laughs> yeah.